Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be going through FR like freaking finally because I have been saying that I want to go into this particular uh, explanation on this new era that we'll be going through but I haven't really had the time to really talk about it so I finally find some time to actually record this. So before we go into details about it, if you enjoy my content today, do consider subscribing to my channel and like the video. And of course, if you want to further support my channel, you can click the join button to join my membership to enjoy additional perks and benefits. Anyway, going into FR, so... So for the entire FR era introduced a new weapon called the Force Weapon. So the Force Weapon is essentially a better stats weapon than your LD and your Maximum Break EX uh, weapon. So for those characters that don't have a BT that you are currently equipping their EX Plus weapon, you can just sell them once you got their force weapon and equip that force weapon to get a better stats. And of course, the stats for a force weapon is not greater than the BT and the ultimate weapon, so you want to keep those for your BT characters. So similarly, if you're not equipping the force weapon, to use the force skill, which is the FR skill that I'll be talking about later, you will need to at least max limit your force weapon to actually use it without equipping the weapon itself. So to max limit the force weapon, you'll be needing a 12 high power stone, which is a new resource that will be introduced during this FR era. Or you need three dupes for uh, to max limit the force weapon itself. So similarly with LD and everything, but just not power stone anymore, and it's called high power stone right now. So to get high power stone, you can actually refine them. Each high power stone is refinable from 20 power stones. And that's trying to tell you that for 12 high power stone, you'll need at least 240 power stone in total. That sounds like a huge deal about this, but don't have you don't have to really worry about it too much because high power stone is actually given during a Chocobo's event and general event and anniversary event as well. So you actually have them um, quite regularly so i won't say that it's too big of an issue on the high power stone part unless you're just gonna use it on all the force weapon that you're getting so yep if you're just doing it um moderately regularly you'll be safe for that as for the gacha rate for the new weapon in the banner itself it also has some side modification first of all you need at least 400 g worth of token to pity a force weapon so definitely have to be even more manageable for your resources otherwise you'll just face a jam crisis or a ticket crisis depends on how you look at it anyway force weapon the drop rate for force weapon is actually similar to that of an ld weapon and the drop rate of ld and ex actually increases i'm not sure to what percentage but right now it's easier to get them as compared to before but the pity rate for ld and ex remains unchanged which is at 300 g worth of token the same can be said for BT, which is also 500G worth of token there. And of course, right now, if you have a 300G token and you completely collected all the F, uh, the Force Weapon, the LD and the EX, you can actually exchange that 300G to four High Power Stones. Although we didn't get this uh, directly during the introduction of FR era, but we do get this quite early later down the line. So I think for Global, we might get them immediately, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, there's ne this new thing called FR Bot, which requires you to at least have 50,000 of enhancement point plus 3 force stone or 60 force stone shard to max the FR Bot. The force stone and the force stone shard can be obtained through clearing the latest event or can be exchanged in the daily token Anyway, to fully utilize the character's force weapon, you want to maximize their enchant enhancement point, which I will be telling you later why. So 15,000 enhancement point per character is actually a huge deal, but for mock pass user, we actually get an upgrade on that. Right now, we can get 15,000 of enhancement point per event for regular mock pass, and premium mock pass has double of that amount, which is 30,000 enhancement point. So for Players that doesn't have any mock pass and if you're considering it, I'm just going to tell you that it's, it is worth it to go for it because 15,000 is a huge deal for a non mock pass user. You only get 5,000 per event, so you need 3 events to actually completely get the amount 
to complete just one character enhancement board. So you might want to be careful there. Of course, I'm not saying that you can't get it because we do get enhancement point a lot later down the line through events where you can exchange it using events token itself. So I'm just throwing up some options and some better recommendation here. Anyway, now we talk past the basic part of our force weapon. We're going to go through the FR era uh, difficulty. During the FR era, we'll be getting a new stage called the Shin Yu stage, which will replace the Lufenia Plus. And Lufenia, as well as Chaos stage, will now introduce a new set of uh, challenge quests. Okay, so from what we have right now, we only have Chaos level of challenge quests, but the introduction of FR era actually introduced a Lufenia challenge quest as well. The condition is similar, where you need three synergy characters and no friend support to actually clear the stage, but it doesn't come separately. You can just clear the regular stage with the said character and then the rewards will be obtainable through the event rewards. So yes, that's that. As for the newest stage, which is called the Shinyu stage, it's gonna feature a new set of uh, skill, not just for yourself, but for the enemy as well. So we'll be getting something called the Force Gauge, which you can see from what I show you here. So the force gauge essentially starts at 0% for a Shinyu stage. It varies, uh, depends on the stage you run with. In Chaos, you can just start right away. I mean, in anything below Chaos or Chaos itself, you can just start right away at 100%. And for Lufenia stage, you can, you'll be starting at 50%. And of course, in Shinyu, like I mentioned, you'll be starting at 0% to build your gauge up. Similarly, the enemy also have a force gauge from what you can see here. So essentially, the, but the part about this is, is that it's going to be a race to see who can charge the force gauge faster. And I would like to call some unit that can specialize in charging the FR gauge. I'll call them as force battery or FR battery. So these units are units examples such as Luna Freya, Selfie, they have skills that ties to an instant turn skill. Using those skills actually build the force gauge a lot faster than um, characters that just use regular skill. And of course, the enhancement board that I talked about previously, the FR enhancement board will be an effect on how fast you charge the force uh, gauge as well. Not just the character that is performing the skill itself, the character that you bring to the entire run, the party, all three characters, having them all max their force uh, enhancement board will actually have a faster force charge, uh, force gauge charge. So taking that into consideration, you want to actually maximize your capability of an, of an FR battery to hasten the force gauge charge rate. So one of the very prime example in my video right here, you can see that I use Selfie Squall and her EX, which is the aura buff to actually build up that FR gauge. Do note that additional ability while half an instant turn is not considered as a skill to build that force gauge. And once you're able to charge your force uh, gauge up to 100%, you'll be able to use your FR skill to enter into a state which I like to call force time. So during this state, depending on how much uh, your limit break of your force weapon is, taking the consideration at 3 out of 3, the force time action total up will be 10 available action for you to perform your force charge. Once you enter force time, the enemy's force gauge will halt or, or what or should I say, will stop right there regardless of how high it is. The enemy's force gauge actually charge at a different rate depends on different stages. So you might want to do some research before going into the stage itself. But anyway, like I mentioned, when you are at your force time state, the enemy force gauge will not recharge until your force time expired. So that's 10 turn free of force gauge charge from the enemy itself. And the 10 turns from the force gauge is actually inclusive with actions as well. So you might want to be careful when using free skill or free instant turn skill, or even your additional ability and call ability, since that will be inclusive in that 10 turns, or, or should I say 10 actions. Anyway, for most character at maximum break, uh, force weapon 3 out of 3, you start off with 120 force charge. This force charge written here will be multiplied with the amount of HP that dumps that you deal on the enemy itself. So for example, if you're uh, dealing a normal 100k on the enemy, 
inclusive of the fifth uh additional 20% from the force charge, you will be doing 120k on the enemy instead. So with that into consideration, yes, you want to see whether or not your characters can fulfill the condition when performing the action while under this force time stage. So for example, if one of the condition is for your character to perform lightning elemental damage, so you want to have an enchanter in your party so that you can perform this uh, condition on every character and thus increase the force charge and thus again dealing more HP damage. So in my opinion, there's two types of force uh, condition. What I'm talking about is there's the self-fulfill uh, FR condition and there's the party-wide friendly FR condition. Um, some examples are for the self-fulfill FR condition is like Tidus, Fujin, Terra, Rinoa, Tifa and Jack. These are actually some of the examples. Don't get me wrong, their condition can still be fulfilled by other characters. It's just, it's, it makes more sense for them to fulfill the condition themselves for these specific characters. Like for example, Fujin's uh, FR condition specifically say that she has to initiate a launch to increase her FR condition. So that's very selfish kind of FR condition. You heard of selfish DPS, but you haven't heard of selfish FR condition. But this is the one of the prime example. Renoa's uh, FR condition is performing a HP attack while the HP is not at hundred percent. Again, it's not exactly uh, specifically catered to just her alone. Other characters can also perform this condition. She's just making it much easier with her skill being able to take a, take out her own HP. So these are the example that I'm talking about. Another example, like I mentioned, is the party-wide friendly FR condition. These units are units such as Camelot, Hope, Iroha, Ursula, or Core, or even Beatrix later down the line. So these uh, units are actually what I mean by party-wide friendly FR condition is that their condition is very very easily fulfilled by other characters, not by just by themselves. And sometimes it's better for them to let the other unit fulfill their own condition instead of having them fulfill it themselves. So what I'm talking about, the prime example is actually Cam and Tidus combo that you will be looking at later down the line. So Cam essentially allows Tidus to hit harder with the FR condition fulfilled from, Cam, from Tidus itself with the right setup. Since Cam's FR condition is attacking a paralysis enemy, as well as performing Ice Elemental Attack, all you need is a X Ice Enchanter and Cam's BT so that he can guarantee the Paralysis and Tidus can perform the condition and deal more HP damage from there. And since Cam's HP damage bonus up varies uh, with Tidus, so it depends really on which character you want to go for and which condition you want to fulfill. Of course, Tidus can use his own FR as well in this situation, but Cam's uh, FR charge is a lot higher than Tidus himself, so with that into consideration, you want to use Cam for a smarter and quicker uh, approach for the stage itself. So from what you can draw from this con uh, conclusion is, each character has a different means of performing a specific condition to charge the FR charge, as well as a different um, uh, rate of charging it. So I'll be talking later down the line next time every time a character is introduced with their FR weapon, I'll be talking about the best ideal team comp or at least team synergy that can actually fulfill their specific force web uh, FR condition. So starting off for example is like Arif. Arif FR condition is actually having the team batteries the entire party as well as performing a converted bravery or HP attack. So off my mind right now, the characters that can perform such a feat is actually Yuna and as well as Shalota. So these characters are actually paired really well with Arif in that situation where you can just use this combo to maximize Arif FR condition charge. So with that into consideration, that is one of the prime example of how you can utilize a force weapons uh, FR condition. Anyway guys, that's about it. I hope I cover most of the FR on how they work exactly. I might miss out on some important details but I hope I can um, talk about it again on a later video. For now, I think this will suffice. Hopefully you enjoy my content here and thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!